The man, startled, awakes. He looks around. It is still dark. Slowly, as to not disturb the silence, he gets out of bed. His wife stirs. Joseph, where are you going? I need air. The baby? He is sleeping. I'm not going far. I will hear if he cries. Outside, Joseph stares deeply into the night sky. The crescent moon stands guard. The twinkling stars seem to surround him excitedly. He takes a deep breath, and the cold air fills his lungs. It startles him like the dream that woke him. What was the dream? He closes his eyes. Something urgent, something dangerous. He must leave. He must take the wife and the baby away from Bethlehem immediately. King Herod, the children of Israel. He opens his eyes. He remembers the dream. He hears the baby crying and returns inside. The next afternoon when he is packing, when his wife carrying the baby returns from the village. I told you the village is not safe for the baby. I wanted his grandparents to see him before he left. I suppose the whole village knows by now. I told only my parents and your father. My father? I thought he should know. Hmm. <laughs> Hurry, we don't have much time. His wife heads inside their house, and Joseph takes out and loads a small wooden cart. He remembers building it with his father many years ago. Today, it is old but reliable. It does not flinch as he loads it with clothing, blankets, and cooking pans. He leaves space for the provisions that Mary will bring from the house. He hitches the cart onto the mule, and he's adjusting it when an older man with a leather satchel walks up to him. Joseph, where are you going? Father, Mary told me about your crazy journey. What, another prophetic dream? <laughs> Don't ridicule me. Who's ridiculing anybody? I'm worried, what's going on? You wouldn't understand. The older man kicks the cart. You made this? You and I built it together. Of course you don't remember. What, you want me to remember every cart I ever made? You made me take it apart three times. <laughs> I taught you boys the right way to build. This cart will make it all the way to God knows where. Egypt. Egypt? I have a brother in Egypt. He's somewhat of a prankster. What's in Egypt? King Herod is about to execute all the infants in Israel. The baby, our child, must be saved. He is special. The Lord has great plans for him. An angel told you this? Yes, in a dream. I have a greater calling than carpentry, Father. The Lord has chosen me to protect and raise this child. So now you're so special, you can leave without saying goodbye to your father. I was going to send word after we settled. We don't have time. You have time for a gift. The old man slowly removes from his satchel an ax, a chisel, a saw, and a drill. The worn tools have been recently polished. They gleam in the late afternoon sun. I don't need these. How else will you provide for your family? Joseph admires the tools. They have been in his family for years. But he does not want such a generous gift from his father. His father, who does not understand why he was loyal to Mary during her pregnancy, his father, who does not believe in virgin births and angels and callings from the Lord. His father, who has never truly known him.
No. The gift feels false, untrustworthy, insincere. For how can a gift be sincere if the person giving it does not truly know the person it is given to? I'm not going to take these. Joseph, these angels who talk to you, will they give you food and shelter? I, I don't know. If you are to protect and raise this child, isn't it important that you can provide for him? I will find other ways. Ugh, all my sons are alike, stubborn like their father. Goodbye, Joseph. Goodbye, Father. Joseph, his wife, and the baby have been traveling for days. They have stopped for the evening. He is feeding the mule, and a young boy approaches and waves. Good evening, sir. Joseph nods silently. I just talked with your wife. She said if I help with your mule, I can eat with you tonight. You can eat with us, but I don't need your help. Sir, where are you going? I'd rather not say, because I see you have a little child. If you are headed north, you must know King Herod has ordered all the children under the age of two. Thank you. We're not headed north. It's terrible. I hear they're offering a cash reward to anyone who turns in an infant. I'm 10, but you never know when things will change. So I'm going to live with my aunt far away. I want to arrive after sundown tomorrow so that I miss synagogue. <laughs> Joseph smiles. When I was your age, I often skipped synagogue. How? I had nine brothers. The rabbi didn't know who was who. My father himself barely knew. I have two sisters. Where did you go? Go. When you skipped synagogue. The river. The river? What did you do there? Nothing. I, I talked with God. Did God ever talk back? No, but I never felt alone. That was many years ago. Come on, you must be hungry. After dinner, the boy is lingering by the cart. He pulls out a leather satchel. He opens it and pulls out a shiny copper saw. What's this? Joseph quickly grabs the tool from the boy. Careful, he looks at Mary. Did you know that this? She shakes her head. He must have slipped it on the cart. Who must have slipped it on the cart? A stubborn old man. Joseph holds the saw. He remembers as a boy watching his father bent over his work table, carefully manipulating the saw. He shows it to the boy. This is a pull saw. It works best on soft woods. Like pine? You're very clever. My uncle said he would teach me carpentry, but he lost his tools in a gambling bet. Tomorrow I can, I can show you how to use this. Really? Thank you. Good night, my boy. Before dawn, he is woken by his wife. Joseph, the boy, he is gone. He probably left early for his aunts. Your father's tools are also gone. He quickly gets up. He checks the cart. The leather satchel and the tools are no longer there. He drops his head. Mary, you have married a foolish man. At the next town, we will ask about the boy. No. Perhaps someone will know of him. No, the tools are lost. They travel for many days through lush fields, through rocky hills, through dry, barren dunes, until they have 
no provisions. Tired and hungry, they rest atop a hill where they see in the distance a town next to a river. The sun is already low in the sky. We will camp by the river tonight. Maybe there are fish there. I will go into the town to beg. Perhaps if I take the child with me. No, it is not safe for the child. Joseph, we are far away from Bethlehem. We don't know if we can trust these people. We have to trust someone. We have no food. Suddenly, they hear the loud crack of wood. Joseph has led the old cart into a rock in the road. The axle is split. Go into town. I can take care of this. I can help. I don't need help. Joseph, it's almost sundown. Go, bring food for the child. He unhitches the cart and leads the mule to the river. He scans the water, but there are no fish. He places the baby in a basket and places it on the river bank. Then he quickly unloads the cart and moves it out of the road. And at last, he returns to the edge of the river. The baby is sleeping. As he leans over to wash his face, he catches his own reflection, and he sees a man, tired, depleted, lost. Joseph, where are you going? He lies down next to the basket and watches as the sun quickly sets. Night falls. He stares at the sky expectantly, but the capricious moon does not appear. The twinkling stars seem too busy chattering with each other to notice him. The dark surrounds him. God, where are you? Where are your angels now? Have you led me all the way here to perish? I believed in you when others didn't, but now I don't know what to believe. I don't know whom to trust, and I am lost. I am lost. God, can you even hear me? Next to him in the basket, the baby begins to wail. Joseph picks up the baby and holds him close. <laughs> Until his tears fall on the child's face, already wet with weeping. The two embrace each other until they fall asleep. He awakes to find an older man holding a lantern standing over them. He is tall and large-framed. Ah, oh, beautiful baby! Who are you? Are you his father? Yes. What do you want? He doesn't look like you! He, well, he looks more like my wife. Yes, yes, he does, he smiles. You are Joseph. Yes, I am your uncle. Your wife sent me. How did she find you? Maybe it was luck, or maybe God sent an angel to watch over you. Who's to say? I, I don't understand. Your wife came into town and asked for the best carpenter in the area. I hear your cart is having trouble. Yes. Yes. I need help. Tomorrow. For now, let's get you home. The older man puts down the lantern. He leans over and takes the baby in his large arms. This child will be our new Moses. One day he will return to Israel and lead the people. New Moses? Right. Ah, yes. Joseph, Mordecai's sixth son? Your father told me about you, always skipping synagogue. <laughs> Joseph smiles and nods. He picks up the lantern and walks beside his uncle and the baby. The lantern's yellow flame burns boldly steadily lighting the rocky path ahead. <laughs>